Right, ho, I'm back. Uh, I've went and grabbed this as well. These are handy. If you can find these adapters on um, eBay, they're actually handy to get. Um, however, This is the one that he said um, that he said had the feature where you can actually turn it between either an active photo cell or light sensor and not. Um, looking at the bottom of that, it appears it doesn't matter which way around it goes. rocking like that. Is there a right or wrong way to put this on or? do for demo purposes, it's working. <coughs> I think that's the photo cell. I think. Nope, that's on off. That's photo cell. So if I actually turn this light off, I like that, look at that. Can you see the flashing slow down as I gradually reveal the light? <coughs> so in other words, the darker it gets, the faster it'll flash. So, it's quite an interesting feature. I don't think there's a brand on this. Um, so I don't know if it's one of those China, uh, made in China ones. But if it is, it's bloody good. There is a right and wrong way to put it on. We live in the alert. All these scaffold brackets look exactly the same. <coughs> it even is on this one, on the um, maxi lights. It's just that uh, it's been put on the other one. Look. <laughs> actually, I think this bit is actually longer, but it's a similar design. That's the same thing. So it's hanging on there as well. Yep, that one's going to get a clean up. It's only a bit dusty. Right. Got my JSP key. That was the one, all those years ago when I bought that box of 10 JSP Maxilites, one of the advantages was it came with several keys. <coughs> The disadvantage was, I've now got loads of maxi lights I can't get rid of. <laughs> these are cold. I think these have been stored in a very cold warehouse over there, or a cold van. One or the other. Ooh. Someone's left the battery in here because the contacts had leaked on one side. Oh, it is annoying when people do that. Yeah. 
I thought as much. These are um, steady burn static. Because, uh, as I've said, in London, um, for some reason, the regulations down there say that scaffolding's got to have red lamps on. Red and white. Usually red. Well, at least I know the circuit is still good, but as this one is the grubbiest, I'm going to salvage the lenses out of this one. Somehow. And here. Quite figured out how yet. They look like they are just pressed in, but I don't know if they're glued. I'm gonna need a good clean. That'll be easier to clean them. No, the circuit doesn't want to come out now. Be easier to clean once I've got the uh, lens out. So, just to stop that bottom falling off, I'm going to put this loosely in. And I've actually got one with a scaffold bracket on with amber lenses. Because, at least in this part of the UK, they use amber lights, so... a bit mucky but it doesn't matter I've got spare lamps in the shed so I'll just pinch one off that I might even have a spare one up here actually come to think of it hey, we're working I'm just holding the battery <clears throat> I'll have a look in a bit and uh, See if I've got a spare base up here that I can put on just to tidy this one up. A few marks on there that may clean off, but I'm not that fussy. Let's just say some raised dirt on the bottom here that might make it a bit of a pain to stand. It might wobble, so that's why I want to change that. Fold that clamp over. That's a bit bent and warped. <laughs> oh well. I'm still one like actually because I can just steal it off of this, can't I? If I get the thingy get on screw, yeah. The one I'm using for spares, the um, plate's a lot better on that one, so see, that one's not twisted. <laughs> the one on that one is twisted. <laughs> not that matters, but you know, I've got the good one there on a grubby body, I might as well take the good one off and stick it on that one. If I can get the bolt undone. Right. Because of the way they put the bracket on, instead of this folding all the way down, it's got to fold upwards. But, uh, Made in China one. I know this one he got from Denmark. Ooh, feels plastic feels fine. The only issue I can find is that the bolt's not long enough. <laughs> it really is not quite long enough to fit that. Oh well. rubber band around here and I wonder oh I know what that was put on there for actually quite a smart idea oh was till I went and snapped it it was just to hold this bit in place and the actual bracket piece 
but I was actually thinking of putting one around the lens and onto that just to hold it up because that is a bit loose. See, it's going to fall down and get in the way. So, before I sod and Z off and do what I need to do today, can we stretch that over there first and then just, you know, get that hooked on there. There we go, that'll just hold it up out of the way, that's all. While it's on the shelf, well, let me see if they put it up the way so it folded down like this one, it would just flop down out of the way, but they didn't do it on this one. They put it that way up. Not sure why they put it that way up, but they put it that way up. Ooh, these, um, this part of the bracket, the threaded part, is actually thinner than these. And the bolts are the same style. Mm. Certainly an interesting lump. So, thanks to RV Lighting. I've got some more lamps. I, I'm going to get to cleaning. <laughs> this needs a clean. I was curious to see what brand of battery you put in it. I don't know why. It's actually pretty damn clean inside there. Cool. Yeah, we've got to have the battery in it for now. I don't like leaving the batteries in because it's, you know, I don't use them on a regular basis. They just sit on the shelf, so. I don't want them to go flat and or leak. But, uh, I'll leave that in there. Here we've got some, some spray and stuff that I can spray on this. I'll give it a nice clean and some old sponges and whatnot. I was told it was a Nissan, but I actually can't see a brand name on it. It's got the CE mark on it. It's got an FE mark on it, whatever the FE mark's for. Nissan had a habit of putting a red sticker on here, so it's probably fell off. Because they had a habit of doing that. <laughs> I've had several Nissan lamps where the stickers have fell off. Right, there we go. I'm really in the mood to buy lamps. I want to buy some more now. <laughs> I can't until next week. Anyway, I'm going to turn you back on later. Right. I'm back again. <laughs> so, got the clamp, or well, the replacement um, clamp on that one. That piece anyway, the flat piece. That's all good, and I've got the red lenses in my tilt one. It hasn't quite seated properly at the bottom there, but, oh, now it has. It's a bit picky down the bottom there, but it's working. That's how you know it's for the railway because on, off, on, off, or off that way as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, there is no push button on this, that's just got a tilt switch. But I'm going to take the battery out of this one now. So, I'll put all these back on the shelf. Oh, and the one I used for parts actually had a decent bottom on, so I put that on the other one as well. The only disadvantage with using one of these is you've got to be careful because these batteries can uh, fall out. So, I suppose you could put a bit of tape or PVC tape or something around it just to stop them dropping out. They're rechargeable batteries as well, I've got in that one at the minute. Oop, wrong way. But, uh, I've got some lamps here that I'm going to check over for Mum.
See, quite nice as well actually. So, this is why if I had the money I would pay to do my um, PAT test course. Portable appliance testing is what PAT stands for. Because it is so easy and you don't need to be a qualified electrician to do it. Um, all you would basically do is, in this case, you know, take a lamp like this, make sure it's not damaged. Right, all four screws are still present, there's nothing loose. That's all okay, lamp holder's not damaged. Right, then you would just check the flex visually and run your fingers along it just to make sure it's not damaged. Right, we're okay there. Right. I'm not even going to bother opening the plug simply because the um, there's a tamper sticker still over it that hasn't been damaged. So let's check the plug, make sure that isn't damaged. <clears throat> um, I will get a bulb and put in there just to make sure it does work. I do have bulbs that will fit. One bulb. lamps because I've just realized there's no on-off switch. No, it's not a touch lamp, but it, it does work. Someone changed the cable on this. Oh, I can't imagine they have. Right. So we're good. I'm happy with that. So just got to do the same with the other two. <clears throat> See if I can get mum to get LED bulbs for these. They're all exactly the same. See here's the other one. Of course, if I had the little pat test machine, I would plug it in, and all that machine will basically do is just make sure you know there's no shorts between uh, live and earth, neutral and earth, and neutral and live. Just make sure that there's no leakage. Just all the all the machine does. So you would just plug that in, and it would tell you. I mean, I could do it the hard way with a multimeter, <laughs> but. Uh, this one doesn't have a sticker over the screw, so I am going to check this one. And plug's alright as well. Plug's compliant. Got to make sure it's compliant as well. 3 amp fuse as it should be. Wires are fine. Cord grip's fine. <clears throat> and by a compliant plug, I mean it's got to have the insulated pins. Just alive and neutral. The earth does not have the insulation on it. And again, just check the flex, make sure it hasn't got any damage. Inspect the unit itself. There's no cracks, no damage, there's nothing loose. Apart from the screw for the lampshade. These actually look fairly new, so... In theory, they shouldn't pass or shouldn't fail a test anyway. Yep, we're good. It's as simple as that to do a pat test. That's all you would do on anything. Like I said, if I had the machine, I'd plug it in as well. And then, of course, I'd also have the. Um, test stickers and I would bung a test sticker on it. Unravel a cable. Let's just literally just lather, rinse, repeat sort of thing. This one's got the sticker over the screws <clears throat> so I'm not going to bother because there's no need to open it up. I can guarantee it's fine in there. 
Theoretically I should, but I'm not going to. Yep, that cord's alright. Yep, base isn't broken. Lamp holder's fine. Plug's not damaged. Plug's a compliant plug. Obviously if there was a short between live and neutral they would go bang when you did that and it would trip out so obviously there isn't. So we are good. In fact I am just gonna peel a sticker off this one just because I know someone would probably pick at me for that. You didn't check it right. But in theory, with this little sticker over the screw, it's a void sticker as well. As it's just showing up with all the you know, warranty void if removed stuff. Which indicates no one's been in here, so I know damn well it's going to have the correct fuse and everything in it. See? 3 amp fuse and the wiring's fine and the cord grip's fine, so... I'm not going to do it on the other one. Because it's got the warranty sticker still attached over the screw, so we're good. So these table lamps are all good to go. I'm just surprised they don't have a light switch on them. Oh. I thought the thread had got on the um, lampshade screw, but it's okay. They're good. They are perfectly okay. The mountains. That's not a proper pat test, by the way. I just basically did that to show you, you know, if you buy a second hand electrical appliance, just give it a good check over like that especially if you get one from a car boot sale or something whenever I buy anything electrical from a car boot sale like a lamp or something I will always open that plug and check it because I have found them with the wires crossed and too much bare metal wire hanging out of the terminals and plugs that are just a total mess and wrong fuses in them <coughs> So, um, yeah, but like I said, if I could actually find the money, I would do the PAT test course, which I, th I think it's only like a day course. It's how simple it is, you know. I just show you what to look for, which is pretty much what I did, you know, check the item over for any damage. Check the um, cord for damage, check the plug for damage, check inside the plug that it's got the correct fuse and wired correctly and whatnot, and uh, plug it into the PAT test machine and if it passes both, you put a pass sticker on it. It's simple. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Anyone can do it. That's why you don't need to be a qualified electrician to do it. <clears throat> right. Camera's getting flat. Well, the battery's getting flat, the camera's not getting flat. <laughs> so I'm going to put that on charge and I'm going to disappear for a little while. Okie dokie, it's 20 past 3 in the morning. I've turned into quite the night owl at the minute, haven't I? Um, usually I go to bed a lot before, but, um, or before this, usually before 3, but I actually had a bite to eat rather late, so I've let that settle just so I don't get any heartburn problems and any acid reflux because uh, I've had the odd occasion where I've been laying in bed awake you know where I've been asleep woken up laid in bed sort of awake trying to go back to sleep and I get a gush of you know stomach acid if you like come up and I end up choking on it and that is really not freaking nice it isn't 
because it gets all in your airway and you just you're struggling for breath. So, and I found that's when I that happens when I sort of eat too close to bed. So, and I do say if you suffer with heartburn and whatnot, that you should leave it at least a couple of hours or so before you go to bed. But anyway, I uh, was contacted by a friend, asked if he could come round because he's bored this week, you know, the girlfriend's away for the week. His girlfriend's uh, been staying with her mum. I suppose it just gives him a break from each other. And he's not actually used to that, so. And of course, usual thing these days, you know, friends are always doing something or they've got their own families or whatever. Most of my friends, not that I actually have any, I think I have one, two, three friends in this town who I would consider friends anyway. The others are pretty much just friendly acquaintances. Well, I suppose this other dude is, no, four, I'll count him. I know he annoys me at times, but I will count him. What friend doesn't annoy you? If they're not annoying you at some point, I don't think you could consider them a friend. <laughs> But anyway, he come over, and we sat here, and uh, he was looking on, using his phone to look on Facebook Marketplace, and he actually found a king-size bed for free that was literally just up the road from here. Um, so, <laughs> me and my infinite wisdom, I'm starting to think we should have just waited and used Mum's car, but there's no fun in that really, is there? So I used Cat's Custom Trikes trailer. <laughs> it took two trips. We put the slats, the metal frame support, and which was that metal was so shit you could just you'd have bent it sneezing near it, I think. But anyway, the slats, those supports, and the side parts of the bed on the trailer, strapped those down. And he carried both the head end and the bottom end of the bed. And then we went back for the mattress. And what I did with that, <laughs> we folded it in half and we took back one of the sides for the bed. Because obviously the mattress being the size it was was going to overhang the back of the trailer. And I just wanted that plank there to add the support so it didn't bounce all over the place. Stuck that plank on, stuck the mattress on top, strapped it down as tight as I could, and pedalled it back to his flat. <laughs> <laughs> I should have took this actually. I really should. But I don't know if he. I don't know if he would actually like being on camera. I don't know. I've never asked him. Anyway, he came back here and because uh, um, I'm not kidding. He built his own little radio. Well, I say built. He just what he got was. The head unit from his car, the radio head unit, CD player, put it into a cardboard box, powered up by a 12 volt AC adapter, which actually gives out DC. So I should say a 12 volt DC adapter then, shouldn't I? Like this. And uh, connected two speakers to the speaker outlet, and that was it. And uh, I now have that, well. I have the guts to it, but, well the speakers are mine, but are you ready for this? This is this was his idea, not mine. <laughs> he built a Lego box and stuck the radio and the speakers in it. That's the antenna for the radio, which I'll sort out something better. There's the 12 volt supply. Um that just sounds pretty good. Does all work. So if you ever want to do something like this, you know, perhaps make your own wooden box, which I might actually design, because I can get my stepdad to cut it all. Um, just so I can build my own little radio, really, and add my own things to it. CD player as well. That's what I'm going to do with this. That's a project for the future, though. But, uh, I might actually see if I can find a better one of these with a bit, I don't know what the um, ampage output is on this. I can't remember. I haven't got a magnifying glass to read that. So, yeah. 
doesn't sound the best with these speakers because they're running out of an old LCD TV. But surprisingly, yeah, they're not glued in either. They're just sat there. I didn't want to glue it in because I don't want to ruin the Lego brick. And like I said, in the future at some point I will rehouse all that in a custom built box. My stepdad loves making things like that, so if I actually give him that, he'll knock something together. <laughs> Trust me, it wouldn't take him long. He could probably knock a box for that together in an afternoon if I give it to him. I'll wait till summer, though. Uh, I came over here for something. What the heck was it for? I can't remember. <laughs> came this way for some reason. Then he started playing around with this Lego town, and then he said, it's, it's addictive. He said, I just... He said he couldn't stop. He just wanted to keep playing and playing and doing things. <laughs> it is. This stuff is seriously addictive. And even he said, you know, the possibilities are endless. You know. <laughs> and that's someone that's not into Lego, you know. But that's exactly why I like it. The possibilities are endless. And I can continuously change things on it. He did swap me trains around. Which is okay, because I actually wanted to do that, and I just hadn't done it. <laughs> so he was just playing around with the train, so I said, well, you can swap them over if you want. <laughs> and I'll have the passenger train out front here for a change. I like doing that, and I like to swap them around. Um, but this was his idea, to put this little dead-end road in there, which I actually like. So that's staying. That house I'm going to rebuild, because I don't like that design. It just looks, I don't know, I just don't like it. Um, but I can't go much bigger than that. But I do want that sitting somewhere. There, I think. I'm not going to put a sidewalk in there. So I'm going to need some more street loads. He did a lot of stuff in here as well, but I've sort of undone it because I didn't like it. That was about the only bit he did. He put the tree on the corner as well, and I actually like it there. <laughs> I actually like that, so I left it, and I... Can't be bothered to move the diggers, they're all right there. Uh, oh, he's playing around making a little airport as well, and that plane that's sitting up like that's supposed to be taken off. <laughs> you see, adults can turn into big kids. <laughs> Whether you're actually into Lego or not, you can just turn into a big kid. I don't know where to put that though. I'm going to stick that there for the time being. My mini house, my miniature house. It'll get there. Like I said, there's actually a few more lamps, road lamps that I want to buy. And uh, maybe um, our guy from RV Lighting will have a few more as well. But there's some on eBay, as I've shown you, that I want to get. Or at least one at the moment. Uh, I've actually come in here because I've started uh, started filling this shelf up and I've had a shuffle around. I've put this American one down here because I've made some room there. Because there's one more variation of the JSP Maxi light that I know of that I don't have. <laughs> I have got the um, scaffold static or steady burn one red lensed which will be used down in London well actually I do know there's actually one more sorry um, two more maxi lights that I don't have they did a version of this but with a red and white lens like this one so I've got to find one of them as well but they're not as common either I have got the railway with the tilt switch red one I've got the LED with the amber lens. I have got the standard maxi light and the stand or maxi light with the um, scaffold bracket fitted. Because I don't know why in London the light warning lights that are bolted on scaffolding are either white or red. Or red and white dotted all the way along. I don't know why it's just a regulation they have down in London uh, but up here they just bought on ordinary amber ones as a warning uh, we 
which is exactly what this is actually for, this cage. It's meant to be a theft proof cage and they're also used on skips as well so you know, skips that I put on the side of the road, it's just an anti-tamper, anti-theft cage. Sugar. <laughs> I actually like what I did with these cone lights. Um, I do have a pair of green lenses coming as well, and those, if I just move this bloody bollard thing out of the way, for one of these. I don't know if they'll actually fit this one. I think they will, because you get the guardsman, that's a Tildorn guardsman, you get the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. I think the Mark 2 is the one with the smaller lenses. And I think that is a Mark 1, so I could take the amber lenses out of that and put the green ones in and have a nice green lamp up there as they are extremely hard to get or I could get an amber one which for some reason they do sell for a, a pretty penny it's probably one of the mo more expensive lamps that I've got up here trust me I've seen them go for more way more than 20 pounds on eBay and that's not an asking price that's not a buy it now price that's bidding that's what people have paid bidding on them. So yeah, but I do want another amber one for that reason. Well, I do now because uh, I've got some green lenses coming. Oh, it's Nemo again. I thought, are you hearing birds outside or something? No, it's Nemo snoring. So apparently my ears and my brain seem to think that Nemo snoring is birds singing outside. Don't ask because I don't know either. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think it will be awesome to get the rest of that shelf filled. By the end of the year. That's the goal. By the end of the year. I think I can do it way before the end of the year, but as I can think of quite a few actually. <laughs> but I think if I get any more of these Nissan mono lights. Or any of that style. I know there's a lot of uh, Chinese versions out there. Which will do me. I'm not fussy. Um, and I will just do what I did with these. And just. You know. Hang them up. I might cover some of them. But. I'll find somewhere to hang them. In fact I could hang them in this gap here actually. So they're out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that railway lamp's got the tilt switch in it as well, so if you lay it down, it'll turn off and you stand it up to turn it on. And uh, I actually saw a photo online. of a train yard that had these right in the middle of the railway line. So I'm presuming it's for when they're shuffling locomotives and whatnot around the train yard that that's, you know, just to indicate that they can't go any further beyond that sign. So I suppose the flashing light on it is to make it more noticeable day and night. Anywho, I'm hoping that I can go to Mum's this weekend. She is working Monday. <laughs> but I do want to go over because I do want to get some wood cuts so I can get this table done. Uh, if I could find my stepdad a bloody heater, I'd put him one in there. Because he keeps, keeps complaining it's cold in there. Which it is this time of year. It reminds me of the old school mobile classrooms. They're friggin' hot in summer and friggin' cold in winter. You couldn't win. I don't think they actually use them these days. A lot of schools have, you know, upgraded by building actual extensions and whatnot and done away with the old mobiles. But yeah, the damn things were bloody hot in summer, even with all the windows wide open and doors open and fire exit open and it's like a bleeding greenhouse. And uh, freaking cold in winter. 
That's exactly like his workshop is. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble on anymore because I think this video has gone on long enough. So, thanks a lot for watching. As always, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give me a thumbs down. Or a negative comment. Do what you like, I don't care. <laughs> and, uh... I will uh, talk to you all in the next video. Bye.